okay now let me continue the previous one so the main previous video in the previous video i stopped by differentiating the surfaces that is diaphragmatic surface and the visceral surface and let us take see the relations of the visceral surface first of all visceral surface has the following relations what is the gastric relation the gastric relation or gastric impression is found on the is formed by the fundus of the stomach it is formed by the fundus of the stomach and it is the largest impression and it lies between superficial and the is super superior and intermediate borders so here is the gastric impression so this is what gastric impression and now renal impression it is formed by the left kidney and it is found between uh, the intermediate and the lower borders so this green thing is the renal impression and now the colic impression colic impression is produced by the left colic flexor and it is found in front of the lateral end that is here this is the colic impression i hope you you are getting it and then pancreatic impression this pancreatic impression is found at the hilum of the spleen so this is pancreatic impression so now the visceral surface of the spleen has mainly three four impressions one is the gastric impression which is found between the superior border and the intermediate border intermediate border is nothing but the hilum of the spleen and then renal impression it is found between the intermediate border and the inferior border and then the colic impression it is found in the lateral end and the final impression which you can see is the pancreatic impression which is found at the hilum of the spleen okay all these are the impressions on the visceral surface diaphragmatic surface as you know it is 9 10th and 11th ribs so now what is this again let me first label it this is spleen this is kidney okay this is what is this intestine okay this is pancreas so this is what is this this is stomach it's not intestine sorry it's a spleen is related to stomach not intestine okay it is stomach okay all these are the na now we are dealing with the peritoneal relations peritoneal relations of spleen okay if you come to the peritoneal relations of the spleen let us see first first let me draw the peritoneum how does the how does how is the peritoneum covering of the spleen now the spleen is completely enclosed by the peritoneum like this okay and at one end it extends into the stomach i mean it, it continues along with the peritoneum of the stomach so it will be like this and in the other end it continues with the peritoneum of the kidney okay so this will be somewhat like this okay now what did you see the parit the spleen continues the peritoneum of the spleen continues with the peritoneum of the stomach and the peritoneum of the kidney so where it continues from spleen to the kidney then here it forms leno renal ligament leno means spleen and renal means kidney so this leno renal ligament extends from the hilum of the spleen to the anterior surface of the left kidney so what does this total leno renal ligament contain it also it contains this pancreas and now splenic vessels which go to the spleen and also lymph nodes pancreatic lymph nodes pancreatic or splenic lymph nodes so this leno renal ligament contains pancreas splenic vessels and this ligament this is what the leno renal ligament contain okay and the next ligament which you will be seeing here is the 
pancreatic ligament i mean gastrosplenic ligament this is gastrosplenic ligament this gastrosplenic ligament extends from the hilum of the spleen to the stomach so this is gastrosplenic ligament okay what does this gastrosplenic ligament contains it contains short gastric vessels these are short gastric vessels okay all these are the relations of this what do we say mm, are the relations of the spleen and now visceral relations among the visceral relation the one relation that you have to see is the uh, diaphragmatic surface of the spleen this is the visceral surface of the spleen the same relations which i explained in the before just now these come into picture now uh, on the visceral surface above there will be gastric impression which is present between the superior border and the hilum or in intermediate border and then there will be what is this impression of kidney that is renal impression which is between intermediate border and the inferior border and to the lateral side there will be a colic impression which is for left colon a colic flexure and uh, the hilum of the spleen shows pancreatic impression so all these are the impressions of the spleen on the visceral surface whereas the diaphragmatic surface this diaphragmatic surface is related to 9th 10th and 11th ribs we can see 9th 10th and 11th ribs this diaphragmatic surface is related now has such you have completed all the main structures and functions and everything of the spleen now anatomical features of the spleen were completed now let us go to the arterial supply of the spleen so first what we have to see is the arterial supply of the spleen spleen is supplied by splenic artery splenic artery has such is a branch of celiac trunk so this is the celiac trunk okay the celiac trunk gives is artery branch that is splenic artery this splenic artery traverses through the leno renal ligament and then it enters the hilum of the spleen it has entered the hilum of the spleen now while entering into the hilum of the spleen before it gives two branches to the pancreas and now even in the spleen before entering into the hilum of the spleen it divides into two or three branches and then it enters into the spleen this splenic artery is remarkably tortuous this tortuosity of the splenic artery helps in the movement of the spleen and also the distinction of the stomach because stomach it is present just below the stomach it is a structure of the stomach part so because of that the stomach has to move it has to what do we say churn the food and for that the splenic artery is tortuous and this tortuosity also helps in regulation of blood into the spleen at different metabolic activities in different ways so this is the arterial supply now let us go to the venous supply venous supply of the spleen is by splenic vein as the name says so splenic vein is the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein combine together to form the portal vein so this splenic vein will run like this it is behind the pancreas mind it as i'm drawing like this okay and it divides here and it uh, drains the blood from the spleen okay this splenic vein in turn gives a branch that is inferior mesenteric vein and even left gastroepiploic veins it also gives short gastric veins so how it such the splenic vein along with superior mesenteric vein this is splenic vein along with superior mesenteric vein forms the portal vein okay this is the splenic vein this is what is this this is venous drainage of spleen okay and now nerve supply nerve supply of spleen is derived from sympathetic fibers of the celiac plexus from where from celiac plexus is the nerve supply okay this is nerve supply and now the segments of the spleen spleen is divided into mainly two segments 
that is the superior segment and the inferior segment the superior segment and inferior segment are divided within the spleen and each of these segment has their own artery and these two segments has their own artery and as a result these two segments the arteries which supply the two segments do not undergo any anastomosis so as a result if an artery comes see if an artery will come like this and it divides 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 and it supplies even this divides 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 and it supplies but the middle this zone the middle zone of the artery does not uh, does not get any blood supply the reason is these both arteries do not anastomose and as a result the uh, the middle a small segment remains avascular and this a segment is avascular and this segment has a good surgical importance the main surgical importance of this segment is that whenever we have to remove the spleen there's no need to remove the whole spleen but the superior segment can be removed very easily and or, or inferior segment can be removed very easily which segment to be removed depends upon the so I mean which segment has main problem so this helps in surgical surgical surgically for surgeons this vascular zone is very important because if there is a destruction of tissue or if a microbe is present in the superior part of the spleen then superior segment of the spleen can be removed very easily if there is that problem in the inferior part of the spleen then that inferior segment of the spleen can be removed very easily so this is very helpful in surgical means this is the end of the lecture spleen which is very important okay then bye